guys, gents, Samu, Lil, thank you so much for taking the start time to speak with me. First things first, we'll throw it to you first, Lil, uh, as you join the meeting first. How's your day going? Um, doing good. I've been recording guitars for a, another musical project. Okay, okay, all right. Is that something you can talk about or is that something you want to keep quiet? Uh, let's keep quiet for now. Fair enough. Say no more. That sounds great. Samuel, how about yourself? How's your day going? Well, work and some dream and eating. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> so it's good. <laughs> when you say work, uh, what work do you do? Uh, I'm at the university as a um, doctoral student or researcher. Oh, wow. That's incredible. That's incredible. All right. Well, going back to you then, Will. Uh, last 12 months, obviously, we live within the COVID times, the pandemic that's affected the entire world. For you, the last 12 months, how have you been, how have you been holding up? Um, I've been holding good, but I think like without live shows and live music and all that stuff, which is like my whole life, mm. I think I'm starting to go crazy a little bit slowly, you know. So, so but there's hope. Maybe someday we'll play live again. Do you, uh, when was it, do you remember the last gig you attended? Mm. Actually, last year I saw Barat from live, but that's like months and months ago, I think. Mm. Mm. What about you, Samu? How have you been holding up over the last 12 months? Pretty good. Like, well, life hasn't that much changed, but the, like Ville said, that the live shows that I play myself or I just got to see, they're like, I'm kind of missing them. <laughs> it's It's always, like, I don't attend so many shows, but... Uh, that what I attend, it's always fun and a bit rest from the normal day. <clears throat> hmm. Well, during this period as well, this last year or so, what what positives, if there are any, have you been able to take from it? Uh, we'll start with you, Vil. Yeah, well, at least you have a lot of time to, you know, write and practice music hmm. and all that stuff. So, you know, we. For example, the whole album, we recorded that during the, you know, lockdowns and stuff. So that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, every artist and uh, band we've spoken to during this last last year pretty much says the same thing. Having the time when you're not when you're not on tour, what else can you do, right? Yeah. How about you, Sammy? What positives uh, have you been able to take? Of course, the same mm. as uh, what Ville said, like, you have time to write and play more. But, uh, well, maybe, well, actually, if your work isn't, like, uh, affected by this pandemic, then you kind of, like, save money because you don't, you travel a lot less and <laughs> everything <Yeah>. like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> some, some good things, but... <clears throat> I like that. Yeah, absolutely. You save a bit of money. So, guys, take us back to the start, the origins of Beyond the Catacombs. You've been around a lot longer than the two releases you've had out suggest. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I actually like uh, uh, like formed the project around, I think it was 2000 17, maybe, okay. or maybe a bit earlier, but it was like a one song approaches for years and then at some point I thought that it would be like fun to do some death metal or anything like that and then I did the uh, the EP mm -hmm. first few songs and actually I like first uh, like intended to uh, left it there but then I found like brutal death metal and slam death metal <laughs> oh wow yeah <laughs> and i thought this is nice i like this skiffy team that many <laughs> bands have and well i could do that too yeah. so i did something like that <laughs> how did you um how did you how did you two meet then uh, and decide to work together on this yeah we had worked before like in old blood and Ever lore. so so we knew each other from way back. Mm -hmm. So when it um so when Sammy came to Uville and said, "Hey, I've got this uh, Beyond the Catacombs idea," what, what 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 were you just on board instantly? Yeah, sure. 
because the first EP was where I played bass. Mm. It was like, this is this old school death metal stuff. And I was like, yeah, that's my thing. <laughs> so I was, I was on board right away. Oh, awesome. And from that then, I mean, how did you kind of develop into the, into the sci-fi theme band that you are today? I mean, obviously you're still so rooted in death metal, of course, 100%, but you know, the major selling point is this sci-fi theme and uh, influences around it. Well, I kind of just like the sci-fi and the atmosphere. I try to always to create the, oh, the music that I create. I always try to have some kind of meaning that it reflects. Mm-hmm. So the like the endless end of space or vacuum and everything that you can like imagine how it would like sound or feel. I try to reflect it then on my songs. Oh wow. <clears throat> That's incredible. Yeah, I mean, I love that. But where does that, where did that interest come from, sci-fi? Is it something from your childhood? You've always had a fascination with space? Or was it, say, watching movies, reading books, that sort of thing? Well, it's kind of like developed with time, but one of the turning points was that when I discovered the game StarCraft. (laughs) StarCraft? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. Wow. Okay, so StarCraft. Oh, so you're an old school StarCraft player? Yeah, and... Like definitely with uh, StarCraft Wings of Liberty when it came, I was I was like really obsessed with the game. <laughs> I, I have like er, any kind of merch you can think about it. <laughs> and all the games, of course. Oh, wow. That is the first time I've ever heard anyone say reference StarCraft in an interview we've done in years. <laughs> um, well, that's... Yeah, that's amazing. Oh. Uh, Bill, um, are you, do, you like, uh, do you like StarCraft? No. I don't know anything about it. <laughs> Sammy, you've not tried to you've not tried to get him into it. No, we less kind of stubborn person, so <laughs> it will grow up in in time. <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, so how do you balance the two sides? The sci-fi elements you want to include, and of course the hard hitting death metal side of things. Well, it's pretty easy, I think. You just take some kind of alien and start to imagine what it sounds like when it rips you apart. So that's, that's easy, I think. <laughs> good answer, good answer. And obviously 2020 was a hell of a busy year for you guys. EP at the start, the full length album at the end. Have you been surprised by how quickly fans have basically fallen in love with your music? Yeah, absolutely. I, like this is the first project that has sparked so much interest only with one album and we are kind of quiet in our social media site so it's really like incredible mm. yeah it's been really pleasing that the people who have found this stuff have really like understood what it's all about how um has it been difficult for you to get the word out i mean obviously on the internet these days there's so much music across all platforms that sometimes sort of getting your voice out there has that been a struggle to kind of get yourself noticed yeah of course it is it's it's always there's just so much stuff and with the you know pandemic lockdowns and stuff like that there's even more releases because everyone is writing music and releasing music right now so it's it's been hard but yeah of course our label crying to death have helped us a lot oh absolutely yeah great label and you said you wrote the album during the pandemic during the lockdown era as it were um so how did you guys work on this together? Are you are you do you live near each other? Yeah, not too far away. But for the first album, I kind of wrote all the music and uh, lyrics, and then I just sent the notes, double letter, whatever we needed to him, and he recorded the guitars, and I did kind of the rest. But for the next album, there are also some music that Will has written. Okay, that's exciting. Okay. Yeah. So when it came to uh, to taking part in the writing music for the new album, Bill, um, were you conscious of like your own influences not affecting how Beyond the Catacombs sounded on the first album? Yeah, yeah. I I was actually a bit worried. Mm. I showed the songs to someone and I was like, if these fit, then use them but if they are no good then just forget about them because they were a little bit more like old school it's maybe even a little bit trash metal style but you know some of them 
made a little changes and yeah they fit in well i think they fit in well extremely well, well i would say like it really for the coming album it really um creates a good contrast because my songs tend to be a little slower a little heavier but the villa songs tend to be very fast so there will be no boring moment in the coming album <laughs> mm, mm. oh that's very good to hear and it's interesting because obviously you guys are moving on from the uh the debut the debut album whereas for a lot of us it really only came out in february of this year because of grind to death records is that the case are you mentally moving forward beyond that album now just focusing solely on what you're doing with this upcoming new album uh, yeah yeah but the roots will always be there i have my style of writing songs will has his style of writing songs but i gotta um think i'm a pretty versatile writer and uh, uh the coming album and the music that I write always depends what kind of music I currently like and try oh. to do. <laughs> right. So the big thing with the next album is that we incorporated some uh, weird synths there. Like in the first album, there's two some like, but it's mainly uh, some effects or atmosphere or mm. something like that. But the next album will have actually synths. They are not in the like main role. Or anything like that the guitar and drums bass there will be the core of everything but uh, uh, when i listen to the, what we have done i think it's it's kind of new i, oh, I haven't right. like heard something like that yet you enjoy experimenting then yes of course that's that's the whole point of this <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, so it's interesting you say you you know what you're listening to so god forbid if you're you end up listening to something like led zeppelin we're going to actually get a rock album instead right <laughs> well that goes obviously for another project so <laughs> boy, you guys have your fingers and many pies um so when what can you tell us about this new release are we likely to see it this year or would it be 2022 definitely this year all the guitars have been done already and uh, i think half of the bases okay oh wow so you're really really far along yeah okay exciting. yeah actually our original plan was to release it also the second album last year but that didn't happen. But we were like so already working on it last year. So we thought, hey, maybe we could release also this, another album this year. But that <laughs> that's that's just too much, you know. We're not Led Zeppelin or Deep Purple in the seventies who released two albums a year or something like that. Yeah, and uh, because like the our debut was just recently released as a physical, it's it wouldn't be so wise yet to release a new album yeah <laughs> no no it it, it doesn't uh, fit quite with metal metal way of doing things to release albums in such short uh short order so it's it's exciting for the future yeah so guys what about live i, I i'm not too aware of th this so maybe you can clear it up have you actually played live yet as beyond the catacombs no no okay no. Oh, we we, we don't have a drummer and you know we have only one guitar player and so it's it's not like a real band we have never even re rehearsed together yeah oh, okay okay do you want to yeah we have some plans oh but, okay yeah but now the situation is what it is so it's like it's in the future who knows how many years yeah yes. like if we didn't didn't have this pandemic uh, most likely we would be rehearsing with beyond the catacombs but because there will be no live shows in the future <laughs> mm. at, at least soon uh, we have like uh, decided to wait some time before trying again yeah that kind of worked out as you said that you, it's taken out of your hands the pandemic's happened uh, you couldn't play live even if you wanted to Oh, we're in a position to, should I say. Uh, so yeah, yeah just let, let's wait and see what comes forth, right? Yes. Guys, that is brilliant. That's it. That's all I've got for you. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, yeah. You. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching. You can check us out on gbhbell.com as well as on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Tumblr. 
Go to Patreon to help us out over there. That's patreon.com forward slash GBHBL as well as Big Cartel where you can find some of our merchandise. We have a podcast running on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts. And of course, if you like this video, do us a favor, hit the subscribe button and help the channel grow. Games, horror and heavy metal. What else is life for?